having established credentials and a capability in, in, in a multidisciplinary engineering field, it really seemed to start to un unlock uh, project work. We won a really good project with, the, with IBM to build a, a new marketing headquarters near Heathrow. We were working with fantastic architects, Michael Hopkins, Ted Cullinan, people like that, and delivering really elegant solutions for that project. Uh, but they wanted us nearby, so we set up a little office in, in London, and that was back in the, in the early, very early 90s. Some of the interesting projects that were starting to come forward, the ones that, that come to mind, for instance, we won a project in Essen to do another tower, a very elegant tower for Hervé A, the electricity and energy company, uh, and that actually interestingly allowed us to open an office in, in Germany. We still, we still have an office there, we now, it's now in Berlin, and, and we delivered that and started to develop more relationships there in Germany. Back in the UK, the Royal Armouries with Derek Walker was a very important project that let us open an office in Leeds. Things started to flourish as Leeds started to take off. We, we moved across to Manchester to, to work there and up into Scotland and became you know, significant players in those markets too. We were starting to set a trend, new offices opening up, taking Bureau Hypod out there to more and more people. So that created the Bedfont Lakes project, which became New Square. That sprung us off into the British Airways headquarters, which is about two miles away, because we proved that we could do these sorts of things. And slowly the, they became multidisciplinary projects, not just structural engineering, environmental engineering, civil engineering. People were starting to see the potential of a multidisciplinary firm and they were pretty rare. And with that, we started developing more and more specialisms as well. Ted had already, already encouraged us to develop fire engineering as a, as a science and as a, as a, f a field of engineering, and that was able to, to develop further. We started developing facade engineering uh, as, a, as a skill, and that, that, it's interesting, but the market wasn't ready for it, and it took quite a lot of translating that into something that people would, would buy from us, would, would, would employ our skills but that's now become an incredibly important part of, of what we do, for instance. And, and so it became almost a habit of ours to keep looking for what was the next opportunity for engineering thinking to help clients develop the kinds of projects they were looking for. Relationships continued to flourish with, with Norman Foster. Um, he led us to Al Faisalia. First real time that, that Bureau Hapold had, had created a, a tall building and collaborating in the Middle East uh, to produce something really unusual, elegant, and it's still a landmark on the skyline of Riyadh, those sorts of projects. But back in those, back in those days, we were starting to open offices, <coughs> Europe, UK, and in similar sort of time back in the mid 90s, looking at the US. We already had some good friends out there. They were architects uh, working on tension structures mostly. They needed help, so we set up a little joint venture business, FTL Happold, with them in New York. That got us a toehold in the market, doing some really quite interesting tension structures. And ultimately, we felt confident enough to take ourselves to the market and set up uh, Bureau Happold in, in the US with an office in New York initially, but now, of course, having spread that across the West Coast and, and, and other offices. So you could see in the 90s that development around the skills that we'd, we'd uh, already fostered around collaborative, integrated engineering, taking it to a wider and wider market. Then, of course, in the UK, something quite interesting happened. Uh, thanks, thanks to the government initiative, a lottery was set up, but it left over a nice little, little nest egg for Britain to celebrate the millennium. With this lottery funding and these, these great projects that were starting to be conceived of, we found ourselves working with, with some great collaborators. For instance, Norman Foster and the British Museum. We won the competition together to build the new roof and a redevelopment of the, of the courtyard, which became a really founding project to, to, to get our London office really well established out there. And also at the same time, we'd been working with, with Richard Rogers and the Imagination on a scheme to put a giant umbrella over the top of, of, of a, an exhibition complex. Nobody quite knew what it was going to do. Uh, and that was going to be in Birmingham. That was the site we DMR'd. Uh, and in fact, when we won that, uh, I think everybody was captured by the idea of the giant umbrella uh, with a very, very flexible uses inside. But the, the, the government wanted it to be in, in Greenwich. 
so very easily redevelop the idea around the Greenwich Peninsula. And so those were the sorts of projects that were going on around that time. Uh, we also won the Lowry project with Michael Wilford, and that was a major project going on in Manchester. So in a way, we were being well fueled by, by, by the lottery and that spirit of, of creating great buildings to celebrate with. Uh, and that, that was starting to still help us cut our teeth on these highly integrated projects. You take the Millennium Dome, for instance. It's, uh, it's very much about an engineered environment, an engineered environment that people can then play in. They can come in. It's got the infrastructure waiting for them. Uh, it's got the environmental cover to keep the nasty London rain away. Uh, now what can you do inside? Some people found what was decided to be done inside w was a little lacking in spark and, and, and didn't, didn't quite fulfill what, what it had set out to do. But we left behind, of course, a fantastic legacy building, which now is, is a great success as, as the O2 Arena. So we're very proud not only to have delivered the umbrella idea as a piece of environmental engineering, but, but also a fantastic venue now for for people, one of the most successful in the world as an entertainment venue.